people. I'm Ginny Metherill and I am a fourth generation witch. Today we are back with my ever popular Almanac series looking at all the witchcraft that you can do on witch days and why throughout the month of May. As always with these series, what I like to do is to give you a general overview of the witchcraft trends that run throughout the month. And then we will go into the nitty gritty day to day detail of what witchcraft you can do and when. So with that said, let's start with a general overview. May is honestly one of the most glorious months of the year, isn't it? The Hawthorne is out. Now, those of you who don't know what Hawthorne is, it is known as May, May Blossom. And it is this white, frothy bridal reef that literally coats the whole of the English countryside. It is a tree of fertility and fairies. So if you'd like to conceive a child, if you chose to lie with your partner underneath a hawthorn tree, especially on May Day, you should be blessed with a beautiful babe whose cheeks are as white as the hawthorn blossom and lips are as red as the hawthorn berry. May and Hawthorne are sort of their hand in hand, aren't they, in this country? We can't celebrate May without them. And in fact, bringing in the May is what May Day celebrations were often called. And these were boughs of Hawthorne cut down to celebrate this incredible month of fertility and festivity. May is all about reproduction, fertility, and it's the sexual peak of the world, isn't it? There is a frisson to the start of May. Maybe it's the echoes of processions past, the lovemaking, the dancing, the going into the woods and bringing in the May. The bowering. May is the beginning of the summer season, so it's the beginning of the sailing season. And this is eagerly awaited by the rising from beneath the horizon of the Pleiades, the Seven Sisters, that wonderful constellation whose brightest and most beautiful and oldest star is Maya or May. And we eagerly await her arising in the sky before you can set sail and go off and do your fishing or your, you know, cruising or whatever it is you're up to. So should you wish to go on a cruise, wait for the Pleiades to rise above the horizon and then book your cruise. You'll have much better sailing. Maya was a nymph who was seduced by Zeus. She was the eldest and the most beautiful of her sisters. And isn't that what May is? And so well named that we have May after the goddess Maya. The old Celts used to call it Beltane, which is to do with the bright one and the fires, because of course this is a fire festival month. Now I've done a lot on May Day and Beltane festivals, so I'm not going to go into too much detail in this particular video. However, there is a certain festivity that pervades through the months of May, which is, of course starts with the May Day processions of the king and the queen. You can't really help but fall in love with the months of May. May is a physical frisson month. It is not a month of tendering long-term partnerships. Married in May, you'll rue the day. This is about purely physical pleasure. May Day festivities have always been slightly lascivious. Henry VIII, that rather mad king, he tried to ban May Day festivities and caused huge rioting throughout the countryside. May Day festivities tend to centre around the maypole. However, this happens sort of throughout the month. Maypoles are obviously a harking back to our Celtic ancestors when they used to worship trees because the original maypoles were always made of birch trees where they stripped the trunk from the, of the lower branches and left the upper branches so they could hang the ribbons and the garlands and the bouquets of flowers from it and then danced around in the worship of this tree. And so hence we have a maypole. The festivities of May are many and varied in the UK. We have things like the cheese rolling festival in Gloucestershire. There is Garland Day in varying parts of the world. I particularly like the one in Derbyshire and Castleton, where they dress a man from head to foot in flowers and then parade him on a horse around the village. Um, the well dressing, because, you know, this is fertility and wells are all about fertility, the water of life, after all. And the well dressing that happens in Derbyshire, I think Derbyshire has really held on to its pagan ancestry, as well as uh, where I live, Cornwall and Devon, because, of course, 
we've got the Obios down in Cornwall, where this ridiculous... I mean, I don't know what the Obios is. I've, it's, it's a horse. I don't think anyone really does. Anyway, it's this, and whatever that is, it's a fertility dance. The village of Helston in Cornwall has Flora Day. Well, it's a town, really, where the people of the town just dance from morning till night in honour of the fertility and the flowers of this time. This harks back, really, to the roots of paganism. And isn't it wonderful? I love Flora Day and I can't wait to go this year. <laughs> However, whatever happens at these festivities, you're generally absolutely guaranteed to see the Morris men. These mad men who dance from morn till night with rings on their fingers and bells on their toes or whatever it is that they've got. They are obviously leftovers of some pagan Celtic fertility ritual. And why not? They were considered mad in the 10th century. So a thousand years later, they're still at it. We obviously quite like them, but that's because they're terribly jolly. I do love a Morris man. I think I might have to go and do it. I don't mind jumping up and down and banging sticks and things. It sounds fun. I think I might join in. Now, May is the time when the snakes arise and form a congress. This is when basically all the snakes come together and start having snake warfare or something along those lines. They will hiss and look at each other and... Underneath this congress, you'll find that they are basically in some sort of mating bed. But underneath this, there is the legend of the snake stone. People believe that once the snakes had had their congress, the land was covered with foam, which I presume is, you know, snake juice. And in the centre of this, you would find a snake stone. These are very round, small pearl pebbles. They can be varying colours from green to rosy tinted pinks. They are incredible incredibly magical. The snake stone has the power to cure many different diseases and when you hold them they are cool and smooth to the touch, like a snake. I've never come across one, they're quite rare. So that's my overview. May is a time for carnal pleasures, the hawthorn, the fae, festivities, dancing. It's pretty wonderful really isn't it? So now let's look at the day-to-day -day detail. And of course, we're always going to start with the 1st of May. Now, the 1st of May, as you know, is Beltane or May Day. And I've done loads of videos on this, so I'll leave you to go and find them on my channel because I don't need to repeat myself. However, I will talk about the fact that when you wake up on May Day morn, I urge you to go up before dawn to the highest hill around you. Stand on the top of it and watch the sun rise because as the sun rises on May morn, it will jump for joy three times or dance. And then when you have danced in honour of the sun, bathe your face in May dew. This is a hugely populous tradition which goes back absolute centuries. I mean, we, Samuel Pepys talks about it in his 1600s diaries. And it is about the women banding together in the morning, washing their faces in May dew to give them beauty throughout the year. So if you don't do anything on May Day, just get up really early and go and see the sun dance. As you get up really early, you might well hear the birds beginning to sing. I love the fact that the male bird is singing to guard his female and he is taking the emphasis away from his precious family and putting it onto himself and saying to other birds, back off war child, I'm here. 1st to the 3rd of May is dedicated to the Fae. This is their time. The veil of the world is at its thinnest between the world of spirit and the world of the physical humans. And so the Fae can come into this world and communicate with you. So you might see them at their revels because they are also supporting this frisson of excitement that runs through the world at this time. The first three days, this beginning period, is when it's most likely that you will see them. However, don't go out into the bluebell world woods at this time because they might abduct you or they might make you fairy struck and that would be terrible. So just hold a primrose in your hand if you're out looking for the fae and then they cannot touch you. Now the 3rd of May is the day when it is known that the fallen angels who disagreed with um, working in harmony with Mother Earth were banished their heavenly abode and these fallen angels, which you know Christian mythology would turn into the devil, 
um, then fell to earth and they come and haunt the earth on this day in remembrance of that event. So on the 3rd of May, be very careful about where you go because you might meet a fallen angel and that's not, not, not the greatest. The 6th of May is the Aquarius meteor shower. And what do you do when you see a shooting star? Well, of course, you make a wish. Now, remember, wish magic is inherently selfish. You should never wish for another. You should only wish for yourself. So that is what I suggest that you do. The 8th of May is the night of the new moon. Astrologers believe that each new moon takes on the aspects and energies of the sign that it is in. And this new moon is in Taurus. Taurus is incredibly physical. It has a lot of vigorous and earthly energy to it. And anything that you do that involves that type of feel to it will have great success within this month. The 8th of May also marks the end of the Beltane Festival. Beltane started on around the 1st of May and it's a week-long festival so it finishes around the 8th. Children who are born between the 1st and the 8th of May are known as born betwixt the Beltanes have specialist powers. They have the power over man and beast and the ability to communicate extraordinarily well with both of them. So let me know if you're born betwixt the Beltanes and whether this is true, because I always feel that there is something in it. The 12th of May is the day that is eagerly awaited by many women because ladies' mantle is in flower. The Latin name for this plant is Alcamilla vulgaris, you know, common Alcamilla. And Alcamilla is because it is derived from the word for alchemy. When the rain settles on the petals of this plant, it looks like the most beautiful, shining drops of rain. And it was believed that these drops are the purest form of water ever and can be used to transmute base metals into gold, hence the alchemy. It is a perfect female herb, this, for it reduces swollen and uncomfortable breasts and, and alchemilla helps with the soreness of that because feeding babies is, is hard work. I never enjoyed it, I have to say. Didn't agree with me what, whatsoever. I wish I'd known about alchemilla because I would have had an alchemilla tea to help my enormous bosom to calm down slightly. The 19th to the 21st of May are known as Franken days. This is because there can be a sharp frost during these days. And there is a tale told in this country that in Devon, where I'm from, Franken the farmer went out and he was so jealous of his neighbour's apple orchard so the neighbour could make cider. And he was growing barley for making ale. And he was so jealous of his neighbour's apple blossoms that he made a deal with the devil to bring three days of frosts to kill off the apple blossom so that there would be no cider for the following year and his barley ale would sell. And this is exactly what happened. And these days are therefore known as Franken days because there is likely to be a sharp frost. So you shouldn't plant your seedlings out until after the 21st of May. The 22nd of May is the day when the sun enters Gemini. Now, let's have a look at what the calendar of shepherds from 1604 says about the Gemini man. The Gemini man shall have many wounds. He shall lead an open and reasonable life, however. He will receive much money and will travel far from his place of birth and not settle. He will marry strange women. Both will die before him. But that's because he's going to live till 110 years of age. And as he's got quite a lot of money and he lives a very long time, I think the Gemini man sounds very suitable for the women of old. Hmm. Is this like you? I'd love to hear. Anyway, let's moving on to the Gemini woman. The woman will come to honour, but she shall be aggrieved of a false crime. Oh dear, that sounds dreadful, doesn't it? Poor thing. She ought to be wedded at 14 years of age. Gosh. <laughs> And if she is chaste and endures all peril, she shall live for 70 years. So she doesn't get to live as long as the Gemini man. He's literally living 40 years longer than the Gemini woman who only lives till she's 70. Both men and women shall augment and assemble goods as they are avaricious. Wow, so you want to be in the will of someone from Gemini. Oh, interesting. My, my sister's a Gemini. I'm not sure she's particularly avaricious, but... Maybe. Maybe you haven't noticed. 
as a Gemini, you are able to prognosticate about people because of their hands. And I'm going to give you some helpful tips in order to say how people are. If you see someone with hairy hands, this denotes luxury. If they have long fingers, then this means that they are mechanically very clever. And those who often clap and fold their hands together tend to be covetousness. Now, my mother used to clap and fold her hands quite a lot of the time. She was always doing this. And she was quite covetous. So that might be true, actually, because, you know, she had collected anything. She liked it. She started to collect it. You know, that's why she had 10 children, of which I am one, because she liked them. Or she was mad. One of the two. The 23rd of May is the night of the full moon. This full moon is in Sagittarius and Sagittarius is all about your creativity side. It's doing what you love. And I think for this night, fun and focus are in the air on the 23rd. So do what you love. You'll have great benefit from it. If you want to learn more about this on a one-to-one -one level, why not come and join my covered meetings on Patreon? Have a look at patreon.com forward slash Ginny Netherall for all the details. I promise you, you will learn so much. And otherwise, please don't forget to like and subscribe because this really helps my channel and it enables me to carry on making these videos for you and preferably share them as well. I've got to say that, haven't I? Like, subscribe, share and hit the notification bell. That's what I'm supposed to say. I'm not very good at saying that, but could you do so? And I will see you very, very soon. Bye.